Hi, and welcome to the Next Level Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Leslie Kalin, although you can just call me Leslie, it's much easier and informal that way. I created this podcast to provide inspiring stories and practical guidance to help my listeners have efficient and effective processes on their self-evolution journey. And I'm so delighted to finally have this episode. This is my first season, number one episode. So this is like a big deal for me. And I've gone through a lot in my own journey and I've really mastered my process and my self-evolution. And I want to bring other people on this show to share their experiences and their strategies and their stories. So each one of you, like I said, can really master yourselves and have that life that you really want. And today I have an amazing guest. I am so thankful to have her because she's super cool. I think she's uh, going to be my new best friend. She doesn't know this yet. <laughs> I have a super like girl crush on her. Christina Lauren. Hi, guys. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. She is a rock star. So tell you a little bit about her. She is a WBFF um, fitness pro. That's huge, like professional in the house. Uh, she's a coach. So she helps women particularly transform in body, mind, and soul. And she also is a host of Fearless as Buck, the podcast. It is super cool. I've watched many of the episodes and listen, it's so amazing. And of course, she's drop dead gorgeous. Like that's not a credential other <laughs> than you. me that I gave you. <laughs> so welcome. Well, thank you so much for having me. And also congrats because I remember what it was like sitting here for my first episode and all of the feelings that came with that and in entirety of nerves and happiness and fulfillment and just like accomplishment, just sitting and seeing your title pop up behind you. It's like kind of an unreal feeling and it's really cool because I feel like our stories of why we wound up in a podcast studio to begin with are fairly similar without me even knowing your background I just can feel that and it's very inspiring to be around other people who have that same goal and that goal is to share our testimonies to help other people thrive in the best way possible and I feel like there's a demographic of us that want to do that and it's really cool when you get to be around other people who like you just stumble upon them in some way and you're like, oh my gosh, these are my people, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know if you believe in the law of attraction mm -hmm. or manifestation or whatever, but energy is real. 100%. And you just kind of gravitate. And this studio particularly is just like the it's energy is, is so unique and it really draws those people, those of us together that are yeah. on that journey to help others. 100%. Mm -hmm. So before we started recording, we were talking a little bit about our goals and resolutions since it's January and everyone's kind of doing their thing. So tell me a little bit about what your personal goals are and or maybe some of your uh, mentorship clients that you see? So my personal goals for this year were to get out of my own way because I felt like back in 2021, when this all started, when I was like on fire with everything, I was fueled by a lot of pain. And not that that's a bad thing, but you know when you're fueled by pain, you are just like, you see, you have blinders on and you just know what you're doing. You know what you want to accomplish and get out of. And I was in a particularly um, huge growth period of my life, a big self-development period of my life, a big like what the fuck moment of my life as well. And so yeah. I was just like, Love those. <laughs> I was like full steam ahead. And this last year, I kind of I don't even want to say kind of, I overworked myself really, really, really bad. And I, bur I was suffering some burnout. And so I had to take a step back. And when I've started approaching my business again, I found myself approaching it with a fear-based mentality, which is so ironic because of my podcast. But that's not to say that you don't go through life experiencing fear by being a fearless person. It just comes up, but it's a matter of how do you tackle that fear? How do you use fear for fuel? And how does it become something that you can look at and just identify it and move forward? And what I found was like, I was going back into this 
self-deprecating imposter syndrome mentality, which is something that I coach my clients to not have. But I once again was experiencing it. And I'm like, this is really interesting, but also good for me as a coach to understand that just because you feel like you tackle something at one point in your life doesn't mean it's not going to show up for you again. I just got goosebumps and yeah, it's wow. showing up for you for a reason. So you just have to sit with that and understand what's keeping you from doing the things that you want to do. So this year, my goal was to get out of my own way and get back to that mentality, but without the pain fueling me because now it's just me. Mm -hmm. And that made me feel a little bit weak. So I'm like, why do I feel like it's different now? I've healed those parts of myself. Why am I not pushing as hard? What am I scared of now? So my goal is to do a lot more self-reflection this year and understand that this is a new layer of my self-development and my healing that I have to understand in order to move forward because you won't be able to tackle new things unless you understand the level that you're at, if that makes sense. Absol I hope that made sense. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's that's so amazing. So self-reflection is a big Thing. It's like really a, hard. A lot of people have no <laughs> idea. They walk around really oblivious to the mm -hmm. fact that that's even a thing that you like self-reflection is the beginning. It's like, you know, an AA in the 12 step program. Mm -hmm. Like you have to first recognize that you have a problem to right. be able to fix it. Like, but to be able to do that, you need to be reflective and realize, oh, maybe this isn't right, or maybe there's a problem, or maybe I could do this better. It's hard to look at yourself sometimes. Absolutely. I mean, it's ugly. And oh, when yeah. you see the shadows and you have to admit to yourself, oh, I'm doing this because of that issue that happened there. And it brings up the pain. So we run away from the fear because we're avoiding the pain. But life is painful because we're not living our life because we have fear. So either right. way, it's just about it's like diving a, in. It's a, a hamster wheel mm -hmm. you can get really stuck in too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So with the imposter syndrome that you were experiencing, um, Tell us a little bit more about that or, or to what degree you feel. Like for those listeners who don't know what imposter syndrome is and how it can, can like express itself mm -hmm. with you or a client. How I identify imposter syndrome is it's, it's there are those thoughts that come in that are intrusive most of the time that are like, well, I can't do that. I could never do that. Why would they want to pick me? What do I possibly have to say that someone would listen to? I don't have enough experience. Who You know, it's all of those it's almost like you're putting yourself down in a way. And it's not even like you do it intentionally. It just comes in the back of your head, like some little person sitting back there, just throwing shade at you, but you're doing it to yourself. Right. And it's really hard because you have to navigate yourself out of those mm -hmm. conversations. And it's an intrusive. An intrusive thought is something that happens and you think of that you don't mean to think of. It just kind of it's there. It's like someone it interrupting up. you. Yes. Yeah. Like I just did. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> you like, just want to tell that person, shut up. Yeah. Like the bell, <laughs> like, it's, you know, that, that voice. Yeah. yeah it's like, quiet. it's like going to an audition because I audition for fitness stuff all the time for dance. It's like showing up to an audition and being like, I'm not pretty enough. I don't have what it takes. I'm not this. I'm not that. It's all of those self-deprecating thoughts that can just do a number on you. And I really like to figure out like what's going on in my life when I have those thoughts, because there's periods where I got rid of them and I'm like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I can walk in anywhere, but I can do this right. or I'll learn how to do this or why not me? You know, it's, it, you have to reframe those affirmations and those, that, that positive dialogue within yourself so that you become that more confident person because co I believe confidence can be grown. It, we just, not everyone just has it. Some right. people just, I think they just are that way. Like some people have that in them where they're just like, I don't, I got this, but not everybody. I think that you have to grow it, especially if you suffer from any of those childhoods that never made you feel like you were enough or you didn't grow up with parents who supported you or you went through something with an ex that really made you feel less than. Mm -hmm. You start getting chipped at. Your soul gets chipped at with these little things that happen to you over the course of your life. And thank you to self-reflection and those things, you can start understanding why you are the way you are. You should want to know why you are the way you are why you do things the way you do, how, why you respond the way you do. It can really help you identify where those self-deprecating thoughts came from or why you are not a confident person and why you have imposter syndrome. Because we're all capable of doing the things that we want to do. We have the tools, but accessing them is tricky. It's like you have them locked in a box and you don't know where the key is. Yeah, absolutely. So what is your reflection process? Like for me... I have my reflection in, in many different ways. Like when I'm going through my day-to-day -day life, 
there are times when those voices will pop in or I'll feel like, you know, I just kind of get that that energy shift, that feeling shift, whether I'm aware that it's that voice talking to me or if it's just something else or another trigger, I will connect with myself. I'll like Mm -hmm. deep breathe, connect into my heart, and I'll just kind of like get, no, 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 I'll change my state um, as sort of a roundabout way to manage before I I can take the time to then reflect and dive deep. Because we don't want to just avoid, right? There's a lot of people that do spiritual bypassing or a different type of bypassing and they just get through it. Um, But then I will step back and like do a actual process of reflection. Right. What is yours? Like, it, how do you do it? I think it really depends on what the position is that I'm in. Because mm-hmm. if I'm like on the fly, I don't have time to just sit there and be like, I'm going to do a 10 minute meditation and figure out like what's really causing the root of this issue. So you can bypass a little bit. Like if I'm at work, I I have, I work in the nightclubs on the weekend. Sometimes it can be a very intimidating place to work. Sure. <laughs> and I really have to like check myself really quick and just give myself some reminders I'm, of like, I'm capable. I have this job already. You already know what you're doing. Like little quick things. So you'll things do affirmations. Like you'll yeah. just talk to yourself. Like, do mm-hmm. you do it in the mirror or it's just all in your head? You're the just like- The mirror is still really hard for me. This is, it? is yeah. it's really, really hard. Mm-hmm. I still, to this day, like healing's not linear. Like- yeah. That was that was one of the biggest statements that gave me the most grace was like healing's not linear because nice. if I would stumble upon something that was harder to do, I couldn't do it. I'm like, what's wrong with me? There's another like that. You yes. can't talk like that. You can't yes. do that to yourself. Nothing's wrong with you. You're healing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you have to start like realizing like what statements are hurting you and which ones are helping you. Um, so yeah, on the fly, doing those quick affirmations just to remind myself of who I am really help. But let's say something comes up in like my relationship. I'm in the first healthy relationship I've ever had. Nice. And congrats. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I, you know, you think that like, it's, it's definitely a milestone, but it also unravels a whole new layer of like it's, shit. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Right. And you're so, at the next level. Oh my God. It's like, <laughs> I unlocked a whole new, like, like thing I needed to co- accomplish, but it's exciting. But, you know, say something comes up for me in my relationship that triggers me and it brings me immediately back to something else that I've been through. I have to like, really think about it. I'm like, do I really want to, you know, um, like project on my partner or do I really want to understand like, is this a statement? Is this a feeling that I can figure out if it's stemming from my past and I can do some work on myself to understand what's making me feel this way so that I can then communicate it to my partner without blowing up? Mm -hmm. Because normally... We are so much alike. (laughs) Oh my God. Like my temper sometimes I'm just like, (gasps) I feel so bad. I never used to be like that. And then I get angry because I'm like, I fucking know who this came from, but that's, you can't do that. I'm wondering just, we're going to digress here. I'm wondering if that is um, a trait that many people who are healing experience, because I was not explosive or at least have that bubbling up until I went through my shit and overcame it. And now I'm like this powerhouse, but like, I, it's not suppressed. It's like Mm -hmm. right there. I think it's like that next level of uh, processing where we will finally be able to experience it. Yeah. It's like you have your voice. And so we just want to say all of it, but yeah. mm -hmm, And it kind of comes, it can come out a little harsh sometimes. Yes. Um, I never used to speak up for myself. Right. And when yeah, I did when same. I did the reflection, I realized where it came from from my childhood and where those traits bless my mom, wonderful human. Yeah. But like I can see I grew up with someone who never spoke up mm-hmm. and I never spoke up. And then I watched things happen and then I realized, oh, my God, like my relationship was like a mirror image. And I never spoke up because I didn't want to rock the boat. I didn't want to like do anything that made me walk on eggshells. I like hesitated when I should have been speaking up for myself. And that kept me somewhere I didn't have to be. Like I, I had a choice, mm-hmm. but I chose to put someone else before myself so many times in a self-sacrificing way mm-hmm. that it broke me. So, you know, getting out of that relationship, I also had to have some forgiveness for myself too, but that came with anger and resentment, even for myself. And that was the work. And that's what made me realize it. Um, through an energy practitioner, she was like, right. you need to forgive yourself. And I'm like, I don't understand. And she's like, you're upset yeah. with yourself mm-hmm. as well for doing things that were hurtful to, hurtful you. to yourself mm-hmm. that you didn't even realize you were hurting yourself so much. 
And she had me, because I couldn't do the mirror thing, but she had me do this meditation practice. And she had me, for the first time in my life, like I actually felt like I was like deep in a meditation. We were on the phone and she told me to go back to myself in moments where I felt like weak or I didn't have any help. And it was so vivid. I could take myself back to the very moments. And it was weird because they weren't as like big moments as I thought about like not like the big cheating or like you know the it was like smaller moments where I just felt alone and she told me to connect with that version of myself your younger self but to me yeah. that was only four years ago sure and you know bring her to you and have that conversation and out loud I had to forgive her and apologize to her and tell her she was loved and in my mind before that I'd probably think that was so silly not in a rude way but I just what is that going to do right but it made me realize like how much of my inner self was so wounded and frightened mm -hmm. because of, I didn't keep her safe. Yeah. And so kind of connecting with that made me confident again mm -hmm. and made me be able to be like, okay, I can do affirmations for myself because I trust myself now. Yeah. I trust myself to make the right decisions. I trust myself to be put in positions. Yes. And that is, so this is exactly what I wanted to go to. You like perfectly address it. Oh, great. So we, we talked about you do meditation, mm -hmm. you do the affirmations. To be able to do meditation, which I'm a huge, huge supporter of, like it's the basis of everything. And the reason why it doesn't just get you quiet and allow you to be able to switch states and do the affirmations and get your mind sort of reprogrammed. Mm -hmm. It is a way to connect with yourself. And that connection is where everything opens up. That's mm -hmm. where you can connect with those different levels of your energy. Like I know a lot of people don't believe in energy or whatever. There's so much science behind. Like how can you not if we are energetic beings? I mean, our you know? heart beats on elect, like it's an electrical current. We know this in physics, like we vibrate. There are energy fields. We are affected by cell phones and all the different things mm -hmm. like our body is so responsive and there's things that are kept in our energy field and we respond to and our emotions shift like we know this mm -hmm. um so in a meditative practice what that does is it connects you with yourself and i push so much meditation with even the person who isn't awakening or whatever because that i strongly believe through my coaching you know the clients I coach and from my own experience, that is what needs to switch on for people to create the awareness that creates then the ability to self-reflect. Right. So it's not just the entry tool to start your ability to self-reflect and be aware, but it's also a strategy that allows you to heal right. and unravel whatever it is that we're unraveling. So is that what you feel like? Did meditation really allow you to go deeper and experience a deeper way of healing? I think so. It's still something that I struggle with. Mm. Um, it's hard for me to stay still because still is uncomfortable. But it's uncomfortable because you have to sit with yourself. And that's what I realized, like going to yoga practices, um, meditating, or even doing things that weren't meditating, like taking an outdoor walk in the morning you know, not going on social media for the first hour of the day. I still struggle with this. But when I do practice those things, I am in touch with myself, you know, getting up a little bit earlier, spending time in the sunshine, like without technology. What else do you have to do is except be with yourself. So it might not be sitting with your eyes closed, listening to meditation music, like that's amazing and great. And, you know, doing a little bit of your spiritual practice, but you don't have to be a spiritual person to practice these things. And that's, and people think it's like all this like woo woo crap, right? it's not. Oh, it infuriates me it's so not much. That. It's like meditation is not frou-frou. It is literally scientifically proven yeah. to help you on many levels right. of being. And you know, yeah. and even if you think that that's okay, <laughs> go for a walk in the morning without your cell phone. You know, right. read 10 pages of a book that you haven't read before, journal, like write down, you know, that actually helped me a lot. It was always like, I would write down five things I was grateful for, five intentions for the day and then five just like like thought dumps and at the end of the day I would try and do it again and for some reason getting that out on paper was really cathartic mm -hmm. and so you know it might not be meditation but you're doing something to stimulate your thoughts about yourself yeah and that really that really helps and I noticed when I fell off my practice of doing all of these things mm -hmm. I wasn't operating at my fullest anymore yeah 
And that was also during that year that I fell off. There were a lot of things that fell off and that was one of them. I Maybe I got comfortable thinking that I've like done so much work that like I can kind of ease off of it. But it's like anything, you have to practice that. It is so crazy. I've been there so many times when I fall off doing my, I call it like my energy management mm -hmm. where I don't do it on a regular basis. I usually have like something I do weekly sometimes more often depending on where I am. I'm kind of more at a maintenance level. I'm not in like my, you know, really intense sort of mm -hmm. evolution point in my life, kind of calm down. Um, but yeah, I found the same thing. I, I got a little bit more like into my head mm -hmm. and out of yeah. my heart is what I call it. Or you can say whatever you want into yourself or whatever. Um, so yeah, that it's just like exercising or eating, like you can fall off the wagon. So how do you, how do you get back on the wagon? Because there's a lot oh, of people man. that have problems, like, right, this is yeah. a great entryway again for New Year's resolutions and just, you know, sticking to the path. Um, I know many times on my journey when I, you know, got frustrated or I started beating myself up, I should know this and blah, 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 or whatever, and I wanted to give up or you know, I was retaliatory. Oh, there were times on my journey where I was so angry at God and blame yeah. everyone else. And oh, you know, this is so hard. And I just wanted to like, not participate in life. I'm like, screw this. I was like a little child. Like, yeah, my, <laughs> I don't want to do your this. Ego. Awful. Yeah, your ego flares up. And it's yeah, like, yeah. That's, you have to drop it first. Right, right. And that's really hard because your ego is protection. Like it, your ego mm -hmm. protects you. And mm -hmm. that's people say, I don't have an ego. Yes, you do. Like we all we, <laughs> we all have one. And until you can like really understand that you need to drop it to get in touch and heal. I mean, that's like you said, it's another one of those like little building blocks that needs to take place right. and be understood before you can do the work because you can do the work, but you're going to fumble a little bit, which is mm -hmm. fine, but mm -hmm. it'd be a lot easier if you can like do those little things first. And my new year's resolution was getting back to my energy management because it's something that was really lacking. And I was noticing yeah. the rollover effect it was having on, my life, my relationships, like my, my work, everything. And you know, I'm so pressured to show up as a coach as what I want, yes. but that, but I mean, it's so hard because there'll be sometimes we're like, I'm coaching all these people and helping them so much. Why am I not listening to my own teaching? Mm -hmm. And that's really smart about, you know, always having a coach, a coach needs a coach. You know, I wasn't tapping into my mentors as much anymore. And so I'm like, maybe I need to take a step back and like go back a little bit drop my ego, understand that it's okay to continue to be healing. It's okay to be continuing to learn. Yes, you're a coach. Yes, you have a podcast, but it doesn't mean you're perfect. And that's okay. No one needs to see perfect. I don't, you know, if you sat on here and as perfect as you sound, you go through hardships and you're sharing them. Yes, That's mm -hmm. reality. And I think that that takes the burden off, like feeling like you need to show up so perfect. And that's how I even was when I started in here. I'm like, oh my God, what if I say something wrong? What if like, it's not as articulate as I wanted it to be? And it's like, we're all learning and growing and evolving. Mm -hmm. So yes, I think going back to the basics is going to really help. And that's what I told myself, I got a new journal. I'm like, go back outside in the morning, like actually find your non-negotiables about you have your morning routine and you're going to stick to it. And sticking to something that you say you're going to do is already going to make you feel more confident because you you made a promise to yourself and you're filling it. Yeah. You don't have to beat yourself up. So even if it's as simple as doing your 10 affirmation or five affirmations and your five intentions for the day, mm -hmm. you're literally putting on paper what you want to do. Right. So just start very small, like so, dumb it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. We were talking <laughs> yeah. before we recorded about dumbing it down. So yeah, you were, so basically it's, it's, um, allowing yourself to be okay with falling off the wagon if we you know have problems or setbacks or whatever it's that self-forgiveness mm -hmm. right and then i heard you saying like just getting back up and starting from square one writing affirmations refocusing right basically. and you can even talk about that too like you know my yeah. intention for today may have been to you know, wake up two hours earlier and get my morning cardio in. Let's say it's that simple. I didn't do that this morning. I slept in. So instead of beating myself up, be like, I missed stepped yesterday. Tomorrow I'm going to try again to do this. And it's just granting yourself a little bit of grace. Yeah. Writing things yeah. down, you're holding yourself accountable, but you also have to have some grace for yourself. I mean, I know it's there's a balance. It's yeah, hard. I know mm -hmm. there's like those hardcore coaches out there that are like, no, you need to stick to this. You need to do this. Like you're 
that's cool. But like for someone who's on their healing journey, you have to practice a little bit of grace for yourself and just take the baby steps. Like, okay, maybe I'm having a hard time getting up at 6 a.m. I usually get up at nine. Let's set the alarm to 8.45 tomorrow. Let it set it to 8.30 the next week. Like you have to go through steps to train yourself. You just can't, not everyone is meant for the like, you know, black or white answer. It doesn't right. work for everybody. You have to be a little gentle, especially if you've, you're going through an evolution of self. It's right ugly sometimes <laughs> like it's, it's not easy to look at yeah and it's discovery too just because you have a plan you make a plan that this is how it's going to be you know how I'm going to achieve my goal that may not work for you yeah. maybe you know if it's a workout session in the morning I cannot work out in the morning like it's so I can't hard. I am a night owl like 8 39 p.m bing I'm at the gym like and then I will just work out myself to sleep yeah you know I just it's like it's awesome or I'll do my creative writing in the nighttime I'm just like this night owl truly thank you mother <laughs> love you I got that trait from you I do love that I'm a night owl um, there's also amazing salsa that happens after hours too. Where? <laughs> oh, we'll talk everywhere. I'm going tonight. Actually, I'll. Uh, I'll tell I you used all to be that. on a professional salsa team back no. in the day. <laughs> Get out! So I tango. I do Argentine tango. I'm looking for a tango partner. Just yes. uh, you know, dropping the line there. Um, but I started doing t um, salsa. Um, and it's super fun. There's quite a few places in town. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, Sand we need to dollar, talk about that. Downtown, Thursday nights, just started. See, well, that's also another thing too, is like, you know, if someone's looking for a practice to give themselves that's like not meditation or that's going to give them some sort of outlet to be creative or find themselves or just to detach from like their nine to five or their life that may be coming more like mundane is like find a hobby like for me I've been dancing my whole life and dance is so cathartic seriously are you is your, <laughs> we're twins <laughs> like honest to god I don't have a sister but I think I just found her yeah but that, mom did you not tell me you had another child <laughs> she's here surprise honest to god it's so cool but that's the thing too like I fell out of dance for a while and there was a part of me that felt empty and I'm like man like and sometimes when people feel empty, I feel like they go search for things that are going to fill those voids that are not good, like drugs, alcohol, sex, you know, sex, yep. um, you know just partying, like anything mm -hmm. to fill just any avoidant behavior avo to get quiet and still and right. So if you themselves. have a problem being that still, like maybe find something that's athletic right. or that's just good for your body. Like that's how I got into fitness. Fitness yeah. helped my depression. Fitness helped my anxiety. Right. It was something that I could control. Mm -hmm. And until I was, this was before I could look at myself. I was like, I need to do something that I know oh the outcome God. of it. <laughs> I did the same thing. So I uh, did bikini muscle competitions, two gold medals. Yes. Nice. It was only one, <laughs> you know, it was a small group. So it wasn't a big deal, but um, it was the same thing. I was going through a divorce at that time. My kids were little. It was the only thing that I could control because my life was falling apart. It was the oh, beginning yeah. of the end of the disaster that became my life. That was actually the most beautiful thing because mm -hmm. it, helped me get to this place in my life mm -hmm. um, to become the woman that I always saw when I was five. I knew I was going to be this. Didn't know how I was going to get there. Yeah. It's a traumatic journey. But, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, yeah, it's it's same same thing. It was a way of controlling. And that's okay. Like, with the healing journey, sometimes we just have to grab at what we can. And we have a choice in what we choose to hold on to to get us through, yeah. right? That's where we can choose. So why did you choose that versus like you could have chosen many other outlets? Like what drew you? To fitness? Mm-hmm. Um, like obviously it was a good positive choice. We acknowledge right. that, but like, was there something more to it? I think at the time I had stopped professionally dancing. And so I was missing that like team camaraderie class vibe. And I was also dating somebody at the time that our group of friends were big partiers. And so like we were drinking a lot. And um, I was also part of like the West Coast swing dance community. And so like doing events all the time, we party like a lot. And I was starting not to like my body. And I was like, this is crazy. Like I grew up such an athlete. I was yeah. starting to get really depressed. And I mean, when you're drinking and partying and eating bad all the time, mm -hmm. like it has an effect on you. I don't care what anybody says, like the things you're ingesting and being around have an effect on your mentality and your mental state. When you're not eating well, it's affecting the way you're showing up in the world. Yeah. So I was just starting to get really unhappy again. And I was like, okay, maybe I need to find another class that's like away from these people. Not that these people are bad, but this environment. Sure. And a gym had opened up down the street and they had like boot camp classes. I'm like, okay, great. Like this is 
something. Cause I was getting to the point where I'd walk in a gym and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'll get on the stairs for 20 minutes and then go sit in my car. I was just not familiar. Yeah. So I started taking classes and this is why I advise a lot of girls who come to me, if they're scared about going in a gym, go in a class first. It's really cool because you'll be around other people who don't want to be alone. Um, you're getting instruction. Usually boot camp classes are included in gym membership. So it's a good entry way to get introduced to fitness. And then at the time, the gym, um, they were gearing up for a fitness competition that was like an, more of like an agility CrossFit kind of thing. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. And that inspired me to eat really well and stop drinking. And then I was like, oh my God, my body's changing. And then I did the event and I won. And I was like, awesome. oh my, like, maybe I'm like really good at this. And I started <laughs> posting stuff on Instagram because I was getting so inspired that I wanted other people to get inspired that they can do it too. Yeah. This is before I had any kind of following. And then I wound up meeting my ex fiance who was like this, it was like the start of the disaster portion of my life. But I, you know, it's like your journey isn't always exactly how you expect it to be. And I don't know if I hadn't gone on this traumatic roller coaster ride, if I would be sitting here in front of you. So I, I say it with, I take it with a grain of salt, but like um, he was really heavy in the fitness industry too. And I'm like, maybe I should compete. And so I just, that's kind of what got the ball rolling. Yeah. And as my life started to take this like downward spiral emotionally because of all this chaos that my life was starting to have, I was like, I want to continue to help women. And I just kept pushing it and it started growing and growing and growing. I started doing like weekly motivational videos and I never would have thought that it would wind up to this. It like, it grew itself before my eyes without even me having a choice. Yeah. But I think that's when you find your path because it unfolds with you giving the universe or God or however you want to look at source energy, mm -hmm. the, the reins a little bit. Right. So, and now it's just crazy. Cause I'm like, I never thought I'd be a coach. I was a hairstylist <laughs> and that's all I identified with. But this is, this is everything now. And now I get to have conversations with like you and Sally and other women here who right. have empowered themselves through trauma yeah. and through their self evolution and allowed it to blossom them into the person we've always wanted to be, but we didn't know how to get there. Right. So I just, I want to like force feed it to all the women that I possibly can. <laughs> yeah. Take it, <laughs> Please take it take ladies. It. <laughs> but I also understand that you won't see those directions until you're ready to see them because there are plenty of times I think people tried to like divert me down a different path or like um, fast pass me into getting through what I went through. But I woke up so many times during my traumatic couple years and I wondered like why the fuck I'm still doing this to myself mm -hmm. or like why am I still here and I just always had this voice that was like you're not done yet and I'd be like what why not like why that wouldn't voice, I voice right yeah. I had that voice too it was so yeah. strange and yeah. I just kept thinking I'm like I'm supposed to learn something from this it's so painful like why am I not out yet and I mean, now I look back, I'm like, this is exactly what I teach women on how to do and how to help. So maybe I needed to learn that to like get through it all. But it's just, it's hard to see when you're in it because you just want to be, you want to fix it so bad. And you just want to like be at the end of this awful the circumstance. Pain. The pain is, is unreal. And yeah. it wasn't until I really gave up one night and like surrendered that I had a really spiritual, crazy experience and I'll never forget it. But literally from that moment that I surrendered and gave up, not gave up, gave in, gave in. every single day, it was like, here's this, here's this, here's this, right. here's directions for this. Like, here's your way out of this. Here's like um, a partner or here's like a mentor. It just, it, it was like so the many downloads that I was, ex yeah. I was like overwhelmed. Right. It's yeah. It's amazing. So you went through what many in the spiritual community call a dark night of the soul. Oh yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that too. Mm -hmm. Same, it's the same type of thing where you have like that voice or you hear a download or you get something that tells you in that moment when you finally surrender. It's like they it's like you have to life keeps collapsing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing until you finally get to that point. Some people don't survive it. Mm -hmm. Some people don't. You know, I was almost there. I had a bottle of pills in my hands a couple of times. Mm. like, But that was my breaking point. When I looked at it and I got still and I'm like, I'm going to do this. Am I going to do this? That's when I heard that voice. Same, same. Oh, yeah. Like, there's something more for you. You don't have to do this, right? And so other people might have it in different ways. But um, yeah, that breaking down. It's, it's pressure. That ego, that ego is literally being broken in a way that you don't lose it. It's just 
it, you're it, humbled almost. Yes, and that word kept coming up as you were talking, that humility, every day I'm humbled by life, by my experience, and it's just sort of integral of who I am because, I mean, when you go through, as you know, what you've gone through, you can't not, you can't walk around like with a puffy chest and like I'm better than, you just, when you get to that point where you have to surrender under all of that pressure, you're forever changed. Yeah. It's about maintaining it so you can keep evolving. Like we, you know, we're talking about going back to that energy work. Energy work, I'm so glad you brought that up too because, you know, again, I have an energy practice. You do. It's really, I feel, has helped me. It got me through my challenging time. But it's also, I feel like it helps me connect into, I get more inspiration. And with some of the coaching clients that I, I have, I'm working with different um, brain wave states, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot of research, even with executives, they're using meditation and different, you know, energy sort of practices, if you will, pseudo energy practices to get them to the next level to tap into inspiration, to tap into guidance, oh, yeah. to tap into this, like different levels of consciousness, if you will. It's real. It's becoming more mainstream. So it's this is so wonderful that you are sharing that you do this because I do. And for a long time, I didn't want to talk about it because I'm a scientist. You know, I have a doctoral degree and all the yeah. things. But in in secret and not so secret anymore, my energy management is literally the foundation of my everyday life. So for a strategy, like what do you, what does energy management or look like to you? How does that work for you? You do meditation, but do you want to describe oh, it? Man. Or I feel like I'm still like the basics. The basis of it is having a morning and evening routine to kind of like recenter and like recollect yourself, especially at the end of the day. I am in a lot of high stress environments on the weekend, working in the Vegas nightlife scene. It's a lot of I hit the microphone. A <laughs> lot of um, energy I collect on the weekends, and yeah. I. I feel like I've always been like a more of an empathic kind of tuned in, tapped in person and it gets really heavy on me. So meditating before and after doing things like this or, you know, stepping out of work and just kind of like resetting is really helpful for me um, that to maintain like that balance. I also grew up such a people pleaser. That was something that I had to really discard that part of myself because I realized that was also what was making me like self-sacrificial and mm -hmm. putting myself into positions that I didn't want to be in. So practicing saying no to things I really don't want to do and just honoring myself yeah. is an ongoing practice. So I don't really think that besides my morning and evening routines that I have something set in stone that I do every single day, mm -hmm. but um, I definitely can feel when I've been overloaded yeah. and I will just take time off. Like, yeah. Yeah. I spent yesterday doing nothing right, and I right. never knew how to do that before. I don't, I didn't know what the off button was because I was such a high performer and then right. also really like overdoing it for my past because yeah. I was like, I was like running at like a high speed all the time. Mm -hmm. Like my engine felt like it was revving all the time because I was just like so anxious and to slow down was really helpful for me. And if I really need it, I will just like I'll clean my apartment. It's really, it's really like therapeutic for me. Sure. And I will set my space and yeah. I'll just do more reading and more journaling and just more time like away from all the avoidance, like TV, yeah. social media, all of that, just to reset myself. Right. And you'd be surprised how much like doing that will make you feel better for the next day. And you just start over mm -hmm. because there's some yeah. days I'll get so overwhelmed because I do have anxiety that, I, and I suffer from complex post-traumatic stress. So when I feel that bubbling up, I'm like, I'm I'm done for the day. Yeah, like you got to discharge the energy and reset like you, now. Yes, yeah. like almost mm -hmm. instantly. And, you know, I will explain that to my partner. Or like if I'm with a friend, like I just I'll leave the situation yeah. and just do that reset. And it feels so good to know, like, I'm going to start over tomorrow. I'm not going to guilt trip myself into being like, oh, I can't perform the rest of the day. I'm just I my energy meter is you're done. It's tapped. Yeah. Yeah. So. I Knowing think, your limits. Yeah, that practice those, that, is so helpful. Yeah, that is like a very simple, if anyone wants to have like an energy practice, it doesn't have to be anything like frou-frou or intense, mm -hmm. but really just honoring when you are at your max and stopping and doing something that is just going to help you be calm and and discharge that right. like cleaning is so therapeutic for oh me my too gosh, it's amazing because i'll have things go through my head like conversations or what i did the day before and those things will just pro press 
process through my head while I'm doing things. And then I feel like it's just, it's done, it's complete, and it's out of me. Whether yeah. it's an energy thing or in my mind or my physical body, wherever it's locked in me, it's just gone and it's done. So yeah. that's really great. It's really hard great to strategy. operate in like a chaotic environment too. So if your space or even your workspace is like in disarray, it's really hard to sit down to that and like start a creative process or start yes. even like a mindfulness process if like your environment is like chaotic. Absolutely. So that was a big thing for me. I got really OCD after I left my ex, which was really interesting because I never was like that before. But I'm like, my space is like, it's like a little Zen area. So I know if I can just tackle that, I'm like, okay, now yeah. I can revisit everything else I was trying to do. Very nice. Yeah. That's so cool. All right. I want to talk about how gorgeous you are and how you present yourself on social media. We're kind of taking a little bit of a turn here, but um, because this has been sort of floating around a theme um, the last couple of days in my life. And again, before we were chatting, we were talking a little bit about this too. So a lot of women and the women that I coach as well, they feel very threatened and uncomfortable and fearful about embracing their bodies, right? And sharing them and being beautiful and all the kind of things. Like you have these gorgeous photos of yourself on social media. Like you are beautiful you. inside. I mean, outside, absolutely. But inside, you're a beautiful person. But um, there's so much apprehension and, and stigma, I guess, if you will, about just you know, expressing your femininity and your beauty. And I don't like that, right? I, I want women to be able to really embrace themselves and be able to express themselves. So did, were you always so comfortable being able to just be you and in your body and be this sexy, like divine feminine woman? Um, or did you, were you challenged at any point? I think that I have been challenged at different points along the way, but I've always been a performer with dance and things like that. So I've always been in costume. I've always like had to audition in bikinis for like, you know, dance teams. So showing my skin never bothered me. Um, I even did, I even belonged to like a Latin burlesque team. So we like, I mean, rhinestone bras and like, you know, wow. underwear and fishnets and things like that was not I don't know. It was just part of what it was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in fitness, I get on stage in a bikini and show my glutes because it's muscle yeah. development. So right. I've always feel like I've, I've gravitated towards industries that let me embrace myself. And there's something was that, was that was very powerful about burlesque to me. And I didn't even get nude. I know there's burlesque shows that get nude. And I think that's great. But, you know, what I struggle with, or not what I struggle with, what I struggle with having conversations about is there are a lot of men who shame women mm -hmm. for expressing themselves in this way that they're not divine anymore, that they're not pure anymore, that they are not good enough to be with a alpha oh. gag uh, or like a traditional <laughs> man. You and I both on that. <laughs> it just, it, it kills me because like I understand the scientific studies. You can rattle off all the facts you want to me, all the statistics. I sat right here and had some man do that to me. <laughs> That's cool. But you know, you're expecting women to be traditionalists when we were all evolving and you are shaming the modern woman because she's evolved and you're, it's just so interesting to me that you're ta they're tacking on ideologies of how women should be, act, show themselves, and telling us that we're not good women if I show my body on the internet. Yet they're the ones trolling and looking and- Consuming my content. Consuming your content. It's like- It's really what? hard for me. And I sat across from this man and he was like, um, you want a traditional man. And I'm like, I wouldn't necessarily say traditional. I'm like, there's definitely um, traditional values that I like. I want a monogamous relationship. That's just what I want. That's, I don't, I mean, I don't shame anybody else for having like polyamorous relationships or open relationships. I want a monogamous man. He goes, you expect a high value man to be monogamous to you? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, with you showing your body the way you're showing it on the internet? And I said, yeah. Wow. And he like could not comprehend that. He just, he just does not think that's okay. And he's like, you know, if I have my woman, you're technically cheating on me by showing your body to other men on the internet. And I was oh, like, wow. man, like that's really hard for me to digest because I'm not doing it for the men. Right. I'm really not. Right. And right. I'm sure he'd argue with me about that, but I'm like, I'm 
trying to empower women. And this demographic of men think that's bad. What I'm doing is by empowering women to be strong and be this. And he was like, nothing about your strong qualities are admirable. Wow. And I was like, really? And after he knows what I've been through too. And he's like, no, being a woman of strength is much more admirable than being a strong woman. I'm like, what is a woman of strength? Yeah, he's what like, is that? The woman that stays at home and let and just takes care of the man and let <laughs> and I'm just so not sorry for laughing. That is it the just, most ridiculous. It just thing baffled me because I'm like, I'm not I'm not saying that being a stay at home mo- mom or wife is not admirable. Of course. That is it not is. It it's tough. Oh at all. Yeah. But it bothered me that you basically just put down everything yeah. I've been through and created right. for myself exactly. because that has made me the person that's here and able to sit down and have a conversation with you while your girlfriend's sitting in the other room. Like yeah. no offense, but yeah. like I, yeah. yes, I'm going to speak up. Absolutely. And I, I, I wanted to comment on the quality of their relationship as well. But I'm like, your relationship is nothing like what I'd ever want to have or even allow. Right. So uh, our opinions can differ, but he's on board with the entire movement of these men that think the modern day woman is an abomination. And that's really fucking, it's really fucking frustrating. Yeah. Excuse my language. But no, like, go for it. It's yes. really, it's really crazy to me because I understand that like the whole feminist movement can be very toxic. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Just yeah. as toxic as, as this whole, mm-hmm. it's, it's a pendulum. Yeah. It can go both ways. Like, right. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I wanted to make it very clear because I know his listeners were just like ready to be keyboard warriors. I'm not <laughs> preaching feminism in a, in a, in that way, in that way at all. Like I think men and women need each other. There Absolutely. is a duality and balance of masculinity and femininity. I'm not an idiot to these things, <laughs> but like you basically saying that, I am ruined after 26 that I'm ruined if I've had more than five partners. And like, I just, I literally sat here like shocked. Even my friends like, you should have spoke up more. I'm like, I was so shocked because I'm sitting in front of you as a 36 year old woman, 35 year old woman. You've complimented me. You've told me like good things about myself, but here you are sitting in front of a woman who breaks the mold about what you're saying. Cause I have plenty of men who would want to be with me and not think that. Right. But you just want to reiterate and rattle off all these statistics and things. And I'm just like, this is baffling because the women that I encourage, I would never want them to feel like that they need to like not be themselves or be smaller or lessen themselves to fit a man's idea of what is good for a high value man. And not to mention, I'm like, your definition of high value and what I want to wind up with is... That's exactly not even close. Right, right. That's exactly it. Like, what is their definition of a high value man? That is not my definition. That's why I told you. Like, it's kind of like verted around the. Of course, masters at that. Yeah, but you're. It's like talking completely different languages. I mean, your definition is different than his definition, and so there's like. Right, and to go back to your actual question, I think there are a lot of women who are scared yeah. to embrace it because it's like the fear of backlash. It's the fear mm-hmm. of the way you're looked at. It's the fear of like, am, do I look like a slut? Do I, am I coming off the wrong way? Like, is this too sexy? Yes. And, it's, and a lot of, I think that comes from their fear of being alone. Cause women, we love, you know, we love to be partnered. We love to be coupled and we, you know, it's, it's, I think guys do too, maybe in a different way. I don't know. I'm not a guy. I don't have a dick Mm -hmm. or whatever but um you know it's they you know women have always felt like we can't make it on our own we need a guy even though they're trying to break out of the mold you know and be their true selves there's still it's that like I want to be this I think this is who I am I want to be empowered but I also want to feel that safety and security and so do I deny myself and should I listen to these guys do I you know, it's very hard to take that leap and just say, no, this is who I am. This is what I want to be. This feels right to me. And I'm okay if that means I might be alone for a little while or for a while, you know, because it's a risk. It's a big risk as everything is when we're evolving. But I mean, once you take that step, I mean, it's, it's so empowering and freeing and liberating. It can be a little bit difficult at the beginning. I mean, I'm sure there were times on your journey where you probably were like, I don't know, is this worth it? 
Yeah. What's the, what's the other side of the coin? Winding up with somebody who you wind up being unhappy with because their ideologies of like what they want a relationship to look like, look like don't align with yours and you've dumbed down every bit of your essence. Yeah. So right. there's a lot of risk on both sides. Right. And yeah. I think the whole self-development and involvement of yourself mm -hmm. will make you more confident in making those decisions because you're like, I'm okay with just me. Yeah, I like who I it. am. I like who I am in my own skin. And I'm not scared to be alone because being lonely with the wrong person, I will tell you, is yeah. much lonelier than being alone by yourself. And they don't know that until they take that step. They think, well, it's so scary. And I don't know if I can be alone. I don't know if I want to be alone. And it's just sometimes easier to, you know what, I'll just mute myself because this is comfortable and it's okay. And you know, it's it's safe-ish, right? But um, yeah, I I think you know, women really, I encourage them to really you know embrace their bodies and and take that big leap because there's there's nothing like the freedom of expression. I mm -hmm. mean, my theme for this coming year, there are many actually, Sally. Um, is here in the studio. She and I chatted a little bit about, you know, my intention for this year and the themes. And really, freedom for me is a big deal. It's the freedom to just be me and create f freely how I want to. That's authentic and inspiring and blissful and all of the things. What's well, that feminine, like, juiciness that is us, yes. you know? Yeah, that creative, beautiful, free expression. I mean, freedom is, I mean, life for me. I mean, being able to just express myself, like being able to just say whatever you want and and be you and pose how you want to and dress how you want to, like that is powerful. It's right. authentic. It brings you so to feel muted or feel like you can't be free in a relationship or um you know or choosing to not allow yourself to be free. It, it's that's sad to me. I want you're doing yourself a disservice almost. Really? Yeah. Just to like not allow that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think too, like if a woman's really looking into finding a way to express herself, it's not just about going and posting half naked photos on the internet. Like that in itself, without understanding what you're doing, you are just as lost. You know what I it's mean? Ex it's exploiting. It's it's the wrong intention. It has to come from that authentic self expression. Yeah. Right. It's me even even like posting a video of you dancing or, you know, posting, yeah. posting things of yourself that you normally wouldn't share because you're embarrassed. Yeah. Like that's, that's different. I don't want people to think about like, you need to just go and like get naked on the internet. Like sure. I post my <laughs> modeling and fitness photos. Although in you certainly could ladies. You, you absolutely could. <laughs> but I think the key is knowing yourself and your intentions right. and why you're doing something mm -hmm. because then you understand. Right. It's not just like, you're just like, you know, when people are going through bad things or trauma. They sometimes do things that like is out of character. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we all have <laughs> oh, yes. done it. Been like, there. <laughs> you usually see people like a post breakup, like they post a lot more selfies or like whatever, which is yeah. cool. But, you know, you see why someone's doing something right. So if you are intentionally doing anything and that's like that's the theme, like having intention, you're never going to second guess why you're doing something. Right. This made me feel good. I am posting this picture of me in a bikini at my fitness competition because I felt my most powerful in this moment. And I'm going to talk about it. So I feel like that takes the edge off of it. That's amazing. I really want that point to go home with everyone is the intention behind it, really getting clear on what that is. I love that. You'll yeah. never regret anything right. that you do if you know what your intention is behind it and you are stuck in your core about why you're living that. And you like that intention. Because yes. some, there have been times when I've done that or I've thought about posting something and the intention, like, yeah, I'm in this mood and this is my intention. And then I think about it or I post yes. it and I'm like... Oh, you know what? I didn't really want to keep that. In yeah, touch. yeah. That was in the moment. So I've had a couple of regrets about that, but I mean, nothing super major. But so you learn. You, you learn. Though, I learned. I learned that I have to make sure that yes, is this my intention? But does that resonate with the bigger picture? Because yes. emotions can run, as we talked about. Yes, we kind so of over passing on that information so you guys can learn it quicker. <laughs> That's exactly it. You know, the practical tools so you can do it more efficiently and effectively and not like the hard yeah, way. This is like big sister learn, advice. <laughs> learn from us. That's exactly what this podcast is about. 
<laughs> yeah. Practicality, efficiently, effectively, don't make the mistakes we did. You probably will, but let's like get you through it much faster. <laughs> That's so fun. That's very cool. Um, well, I think we covered a lot that was today. A lot. <laughs> yeah, a ton of stuff. I mean, we had so many takeaways, um, meditation, affirmations, and um, energy work. We talked about, yeah, intention is like the big one. I think is yeah. like a super, super one that I want everyone to to really resonate with, and that reflection process. So, finding a way that you can really reflect on your challenges, your shadows, emotions, whatever they are, and get clear. Because from that reflection comes that clarity. And then from the clarity, you can decide what you want to do with it. Yeah. What tools, what strategies, what um, what needs to change, what needs to be up-leveled, what needs to sort of be worked out. Um, as scary as it is, we just got to dive in. That's yeah. what we're here for. You know, get to the next level is challenging, but... We got it, right? Awesome. So I want to make sure that everyone knows how to reach out to you if they want to get the one-on-one -on -one mentorship. So where do we send them? For sure. So we are actually in the process of recreating the Fearless as Fuck website page. So currently you can just go to my Instagram. Um, it's christina.lauren. I'm sure they'll leave it in the link, um, the little link below here. And then also Fearless as Fuck, the podcast has a page. But if you go into the link tree on my personal page, there is a one-on-one -on -one mentorship application form. It'll send you directly to me. Um, you can also just pop in my DMs too. If you don't want something so informal, we can chat about it. That's awesome. Well, this has been so fantastic. Thank you so much, Christina Lauren, for Thank being you. here today on my very first episode Yay. of season one. <laughs> I made it through. Woo. No tears. No. Like a champ. They're gonna, they'll <laughs> come. They will come. <laughs> come. Oh, my God. I can't believe. <laughs> oh, this has been wonderful. All right, everyone. Until next time.